The reason this show concludes with what the Bible has to say about money is because, well, quite frankly, the Bible has a lot to say about it. In fact, the Bible addresses money and possessions more than it even mentions heaven and hell. Yet with all this talk about man, money, and God, we must step back and ask the obvious question. Why would the Bible contain so much about money? Is it because God wants us to be better money managers and better stewards of what he has so graciously allowed us to have? Well, for sure, but I believe it's much deeper than that. I believe that the main reason God speaks to money and possession is because he knows that the subject will always get man's attention. Take the many parables Jesus taught, such as this one. Is this a Jesus how-to on how to run and start a successful business? Or is Jesus using man-made possessions within a God-given universe to explain our relationship to him? I think the latter. Bottom line, with God's word covering the topic of money at every turn of the page, is it any wonder that many Christians, when asked, whose money is this anyway, will immediately respond, well, of course, it's God's money. But is that really accurate? Is this thing we possess called money and the things we can acquire with it, our possessions, owned by God or owned by man? Well, one of the most interesting encounters dealing with man, money, and God is found in Acts chapter 4 and 5, where we see some things happening upon the face of the earth, the Holy Spirit descending upon what we believe to be the first church. As God's Spirit moves upon the people, the spirit of giving kicks in with one generous couple selling a plot of land and not just giving the old covenant law of 10% to the church. No, this couple, full of the Holy Spirit, gives it all. Seeing this generous gift and the potential accolades of giving such a tremendous amount to the church, another couple parades to the front of the altar and pretends to give 100% of their assets to the church as well but they secretly hold back some of the gift. Called out for their deception of giving less than they pretend to give, Peter asked one of the more provocative questions on the matter of who owns what and where when he asked this rhetorical question. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Now take a minute to really think about this. What do you see? Well, what I see is God reminding these fine folks that number one, you can't fool God, but more to our subject today, God in his grace allows us to make our own decisions on what we give because he has allowed us to be in control of what we own. The apostle Paul gives further evidence of this liberty of saving and spending and giving as we are being led by the Holy Spirit when 2 Corinthians chapter 9 he instructs the followers of Jesus Christ to give what we own as though we are in control because each one should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not out of regret nor compulsion. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. And through our giving as led by the Spirit, we can have confidence that our giving will be for our good and his glory. So Christian, the next time the guilt trip gospel is sweeping across your mind as to who owns what and what you are in control of, know this. Assuming you are yielding to God's spirit, you will find peace of mind in knowing that what you own, you can control. And what you can control allows you the liberty to save, spend, and give as you feel led to do so. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like, check out these other clips. And be sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button for more videos.